Utensils. Uh, I'm not going to be long tonight because I'm in the old kitchen, or the wife's kitchen I should say. And I've been doing a couple of brews up today. Um, I've been up the allotment on the plot. Uh, a lot of damage to some fly and beetles, especially on the croissants. I haven't paid as much attention to them this year as what I should have. Uh, but unfortunately been busy over the last few weeks. I've let things go a little awry. So I'm gonna put pay to that tomorrow. I've been up and clean most of them up. Try to take most of the side out of them so at least I've left myself with a good two or three blooms uh, per plant. As I say there's a bit of fly damage and flea beetle damage to the um, the leaves so I intend to fix that tomorrow. Uh, I've been busy for a couple of hours down here and my first cocktail is garlic. I brought a couple of cloves down from the garden and what I did, I got a small saucepan, chopped the garlic up nice and small and then infused it in water. That's a good word, infused. It's cooled down now. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to run the garlic through a mesh, uh, a bit of cloth, a bit of mutton cloth and get all that juice out. I tend to use a lot of old uh, equipment, paint tubs, uh, buckets, anything that will not, um, not leave too much smell. Right, so that's great. I've, as I say, I've, um, I've drained that off well. I'll just leave that sieve there. And what I've got there, I've got three quarters of a pint of juice. Well, that's I started with a pint of water in the pan and I say I just let it on a very small simmer, on a very low simmer, just let it bubble away for a good half hour to three quarters of an hour. And uh, as I say, I'm doing it just on three quarters of a pint, which is ideal. It's perfect for what I want. Um, I've got a, a litre spray in the allotment. So that'll go into the litre spray and I'll make it, make it up to the full litre and then uh, what I'll have is a nice good drop of washing up liquid. Any kind of washing up liquid will do. So you get a nice soapy solution. And that is a perfect uh, spray for my strawberries. Which I'll be potting off for the next year too. Um, as I say the garlic, the scent, a lot, of, a lot of the bugs don't like that. And with the soapy water, if there's any green fly, white fly on them, that'll kill them off. And that'll certainly deter them over the next couple of months. I don't want to use anything too strong on them, as I say the strawberries have just rooted. So my next job now is to get them into the new pots with our compost. We've made a mix up so I'll be showing you on the next video um, what the compost consists of and how we make it up and what quantities. Uh, so this is the next step, it's getting them strawberries potted on into the new pots and then a good spraying with some garlic juice and some soapy water and that'll set them up fine for the rest of the winter. I'll put that to one side for the time being and while I'm on with the garlic um, I've cleaned all these up this afternoon these are of course the um, the bulbils which I took off the bottom of the comb so they're weak in the, in the allotment um, they're rock hard there was a few people um, on the garden programs online wanting to know how to how to grow these from seed well, it's, it's an easy enough job. Um, I don't like to set these away too early. I like to wait until about August time and set them in there. There's, there's two or three different ways you can do that, um, which I'll show you in the next video. As I say, for the time being, all I've done is give them a good cleaning up, a bit of soapy water, and give them a good washing, and then I'll be opening the shells up on some of these uh, and treating them with a bit of yellow sulphur and then potting them on. I will start a few off next week uh, in a few trades. I've got um, different methods of starting them up. You can use sharp sand, you can use a mixture of sharp sand and peat 
or just a multi purpose compost. Um, if you don't want to use sharp sand, the yeah, vermiculite is, uh, is an ideal thing, it's just a, a nice airy mixture. And all you want to do is set the combs on, uh, not too deep, in small trays. Um, as I say, I'll show you how to go on with these next week. I will set them over to half a dozen away in different compost, and we'll see which ones are growing the best by the August time when I start off the main crop and grow them all on. Um, the bulbils will be grown for a good year and then next year hopefully we'll get a nice big um, comb out of them, a nice bit of bulb and then we can plant that the following year for what we call stock. There's some nice big ones amongst these so I'm going to just take my time going through them and what I'll do I'll sort out all the best ones um, and then a few of the smaller ones I'll set these away early next week just to, just for a trial run We'll break our shells, get them out of the shells, give them a little bit of steep in some water, soften them up a little bit and then we'll, uh, we'll set some of them away in the greenhouse. I've emptied all the greenhouse out now, just check my power, my lighting, everything's working fine. Um, all I have in this area is the tumbler toms, so they're finished now and we're, we're busy uh, using the main crop tomatoes from the, from the plot. So my greenhouse at, at home now is empty, um, so I'm quite willing to to get cracking on these and get them in and see if we can get them rooted. Um, we've got some uh, bellus, beers you can put in, some wallflowers, um, quite a few different things, bits and pieces you can sow now. So I will do a video next week on sowing and we will get started on these garlics. But just one last thing before I go the night, um, as I say that was the juice of the garlic. So I'm just going to leave that garlic in there put that to one side for the time being. I've got a, an old paint bucket here which I like to use and I'm going to spread the, the muzzle net right across the bucket. Hopefully I can get that across there. Although I think I will take that garlic out because it's a little bit heavy. I'll just tip that into there for the time being. And that's, that's all the garlic. Um, it's, it's of no use now. The only setback is the smell. It smells like a pizza pot in here and the wife's not very happy at all so I think um, I think next time I'm going to have to get myself a little stove and do it outside in the, in the garage because it, it does not smell. So okay we've got our bucket sets now and what I've done in this tank here, it's another very old one. I must insist that you use it very carefully. This is rhubarb leaves, it is a poison. So just be very careful with it. Um, what I've done, I've took a good handful of rhubarb leaves, one about a half a pound, uh, just twisted them up, put them in a the pan, and to the pan I've added two pints of water. And the same thing again, put the lid on, bring it to the boil, and then just let it simmer for a good hour. And what you'll end up with as well, a horrible, smelly, green, slimy juice. So now this is going to be tipped into the muslin, into the bucket, as, as you can see, all the leaves of the rhubarb. Just take the time with that, and hopefully, we'll end up with a good pint. There we are, get that in. As I say, try to use old pans, so I've got two or three of these in the garage, which are, um, are fine for this purpose. What you don't want to be doing is using your utensils that you use every day. Um, just remember this is a poison. Um, rhubarb leaves are poisonous. But to me, there's a muslin net. And that will just happily drain away. And we've got a lovely green juice from the rhubarb leaves. I would not recommend using this for any of your foodstuffs. These are simply for the chrysanthemums. Dahlias, any flowers, well, anything you're not going to eat. Um, and as I say, I'm left with a lovely green juice. So I'll pop that into there, just for the time being. Um, I did have another dish somewhere. Yep, yeah. I've got another dish here. I'll pop the, the garlic into there. This is one of the why well, utensils we use at home, so I don't mind that, it's only garlic. And then the rhubarb, 
can be took out of there and measured. And we'll have a good paint here. Now we've got a 3 litre sprayer up the allotment. So that is going to go into a 3 litre spray. We've got a little bit left there so I can take it to a, a pint and a half. At least a pint and a half and that will go into a 3 litre spray. And once again the 3 litre spray will be topped right up with nice fresh warm water and then two or three good squirts of washing up liquid and that will go in the croissants tomorrow and uh, well the bugs aren't going to like that at all that will sharp shift them uh, and as I say the cabbages we can give them a spray they're not too, um, too bad at the moment there's nothing there's a few caterpillar eggs starting to show but what we can do is we can give them a little bit of spray with this it's not going to do too much harm um, on the early stages as I say the, the cabbages aren't ready for eating yet so I'm not too worried about that but we'll, we'll certainly do the croissants with the uh, with the rhubarb spray and we'll do the strawberries with the garlic spray so that's two good con con concoctions made up at the moment uh, there's quite a few other bits and pieces you can use in the garden uh, spray wise if you don't like using chemicals and by all means try the garlic one uh, it doesn't do any harm it just gives a a really bad taste in the mouth of the bugs when they're munching on, on our plants but um, as I say we don't mind that and that's it for the night so what we'll do tomorrow we'll get ourselves way up there get the sprays loaded up as I say don't forget to soak the, the uh, washing up liquid that's one of the main things and what, what the washing up liquid is going to do it's going to help the spray at DFA plants um, what some people like to do is use a, a cupful of um, sunflower oil or any of the rapeseed oils. You can use a little drop of that in the spray, but I would suggest if you are using that, that your, your water or your spray that you're using is warm because it'll, I find it, it'll stick a lot to the uh, if you're just using a small spray and you've got a fine spray on it. But um, I think the washing up liquids, I found it to be the best. But, um, by all means, try a different version if you want to, but just make sure there's a couple of good squirts of washing up liquid in there, give it a good stirring around, get it in your spray, add your warm water, a good shake up, and then crack on. As I say, my strawberries will be potted up tomorrow, the nice young fresh strawberries, and I'll get a good dose of garlic spray. It's not going to do them any harm because we're not going to be um, fruit until next year. But all I'm doing is protect them, or give them a little bit of protection, I hope, from green fly, white fly, black fly, or any bug that comes along and doesn't like the taste of garlic. It's going to be on them leaves, uh, and as I say, the washing up liquid is going to help it stick to the leaves, and so hopefully it should give her a little bit of um, a little bit of cover for the next couple of months until the cooler weather comes and hopefully the bugs will disappear. So that's the garlic out of the way, and as I say, the rhubarb, be very careful with this. By all means, try it. Um, just a couple of rhubarb leaves, um, boil them down in an old can, an old kettle, anything you want. You get a little bit of juice, and do the same with this. Plenty of soapy, plenty of soapy liquid in with it, and they're great for any flowers. Dahlias, especially for black fly, I've used it quite a lot um, when I grew dahlias a few years ago for the shoes. Um, but my croissants have taken a bit of a batter in the last couple of days. We had hit some heavy winds and heavy rain the other day. Um, so that caused a few uh, breakages on the on some of the um, stems. So a lot of wanted this button, so I've tried to do as much as I can tonight. Um, and what I like to do with the croissants this time of year is to top up the pots. So I've, uh, I've spent a few hours tonight. Um, this button, as I say, it should have been done a little bit earlier because, as you know, the, the side shoots that come up with croissants, if you catch them early, if they're nice and young, you can nip them off easy enough. If you let them grow too long, they get a bit twiggy. Uh, and when you try them off and you, you try to break them off, you could do um, damage to the to the brake board, which at the end of the day, that's, that, that's your main um, the priority, is just to leave your brake board, one brake board on each stem, and then one flower on each stem. If you don't want to just put your croissants, that's fine. You can end up with a nice big spray, but um, I'll show you all this tomorrow. But for the time being, I'm going to put these sprays to one side, put them safe out the way of everybody, and get on with some washing up and try and get rid of the smell of this garlic because it absolutely honks in here and no, no wonder what, what else is going to go crazy when she comes back in if it's, uh, if it's not tidy 
So for the time being, um, I'll crack on with this and I'll see you at the plot in a couple of hours time. Okay, bye for now. picking the runners off. Uh, these are next year's new plants and they're looking absolutely fantastic. Here's all the stems I've just cut away from the from the mother plants. Really well rooted so we're well on our way to getting next year's crop sorted out. So I'm going to start the night just by letting these down. There are trees here. They're looking really healthy. Some nice runners and they're well rooted as you can see. Nice sharp face to this. We just cut away from the, the plant, the main stem, tidy up any runners that's coming through, and once, don't forget your straw. Take your straw, save that for next year. That'll go in there. Well, I've made me mix up my new mix, um, which a lot of people are asking about, so I'll take you through that tonight. But uh, first, I'll get the last one potted up. Take it up with small pot, and as you can see, a lovely well rooted plant here. Well pleased with them. These have been outside for the last four weeks. Um, it's been really freezing here in the northeast the last couple of days, even today. Winds blowing, rain. Uh, but I'm determined to get these jobs out the road tonight. So, my new compost, as I say, this is only peat and sand. Uh, multi purpose compost and very sharp sand. It was only to get the plant rooted, get the young runners in, get them good root system built on them and then we can start from now. So a nine centimetre pot with our own compost in and get that in just so it's sitting on the top, doesn't have to be too deep. I like them just sitting on the top there, little top. And I like to put them in a tree of their own. And there we go. There's one tree done already and that's absolutely fantastic. Lovely and clean. Well pleased with them. There's no holes in these trays, so we can water from the bottom. Um, the only trouble we'll find is when we leave them outside, if we get any heavy rains, we've got to tip them out. We don't want too much water sitting in the bottom. So they'll take no more feeding, um, just watering, that's all, until we get a, get a good root system built up in these pots, and then by September we'll be able to plant these into the baskets. So these are the first year runners. Uh, all I've got to do tonight is to give them a good spraying. I'm just going to pop these down, just for the moment, under there, on that bench, and hopefully it'll hold it. As I say, I've got, um, I've got plenty of runners to get through, so I'll, uh, I'll make a good start tonight. Um, before I start spraying, I want to show you our, our compost, the way we make ours up. As I explained the other day, um, we like to do ours in the cement mixer. I don't, I don't expect you to go out and start buying cement mixes. Yeah, we, we make it in, in massive amounts because we do that many plants. But if you want to, it's, uh, it's basically a 3 2 1 mixture. Yeah, we use a uh, multi purpose compost. In one mix, I'll put a full 75 litre bag. And then we'll go 50 litres of good garden soil, sieved soil if you want. Um, sometimes I don't bother, I like it nice and rough. Get that in, and then 25 of Good horse manure. This is well rotted horse manure, and it's a nice, friable substance to make a mix. So, we want 25 litres of that and 25 litres of good sharp sand. Now, the only difference between the mixes and the um, for these is we we'll put sharp sand in, just to give them well, keep them well drained while they're in the trays. When I put them up in the baskets, we don't use sharp sand because of the weight. Um, it's going to be very heavy in the basket. So all we do is we'll put our soil in, not so much soil, uh, or compost, and we'll try and add a bit of vermiculite in the course of the manure. So it really lightens the load in the baskets. Um, the idea being is just to feed them with the good compost and not make the baskets over heavy. Because in the springtime, when they're in full bloom and uh, they're fully loaded with fruit, there's quite a bit of weight in it. So we'll take you through that in the stages we'll come come nearer to September. But for the time being, um, 
there's our own pot mix and it's, it's, as I say it's a lovely mix it's um, good garden soil or you can use your, your own compost from out the compost bins um, bring it through and take some of the not too rotten stuff out and you can use that um, as I say it's quite easy to make if you're making it in smaller quantities um, just use an ordinary bucket you want a full bucket of compost and then you want half of that of good garden soil then you want 25 of shop sand and 25 of good well rotted manure and that's your mixture and then a good handful of bone meal put that in, mix it well together and uh, it's a fantastic mix and that's all we use we've never had any problems with it, we grow everything right throughout the year all our, all our cuttings, all our seedlings um, once potting off they all go into this mixture tomatoes, everything grows well in it so it's worthwhile trying if you want to uh, get some decent plants for next year right so just before I take you down to the bottom of the garden I want to give you a spray in as I was explaining earlier um, this is the first of our mixes and this is the garlic and for this it's a preventive spray um, I've got warm water in here I've got um, three quarters of a pint of the garlic mix that I strained off it's been, it's been standing overnight so it's, um, it's well mixed in some good soapy water, just ordinary washing up good, and some nice warm water and then as you can see it's quite easy to spray it so I'm getting a good a real good soap with that under soil and uh, if you can smell it now well it's it's like a pizza shop the, the, the strength of the garlic is coming straight out of there you can smell it, it's not going to do the plants any harm at all all it's going to do is the uh, water from pesky bugs the soapy water is sticking to the plants lovely with the garlic in so I'm hoping that the bugs that do come along in the future they're not going to eat them so that's the first that's the first of that spray as I say it's a, it's a preventive spray more than anything else but it, uh, it does keep the bugs away it keeps the plants nice and clean because they're going to be sitting outside now right until September till we start putting up into the baskets and then the baskets will stop out right over until January but as I say we can go, go through them at a later date um, once we're starting them for me that tree is finished now and that will go and sit outside um, where it will stay as I say until September a really nice dozen good plants here um, good fresh compost well sprayed and now we can just pop them out in the fresh air and leave them to it I've got one more spray to show you uh, I'm going to go down the bottom now because um, we have had a bit of trouble on the bottom strawberries that's outside so I'm going to I've made a spray up last night and of course this is the rhubarb spray as I say on the on the video prior just be very careful when you're using this uh, it is a poison and all I do is um, wilt the roots down in some boiling water let them sleep for a couple of hours and then strain them off mix with good hot water again and plenty of soapy liquid and what we're going to do now we're going to go down and give them strawberries on the bottom end a really good soaking um, through the leaves we've got a few little caterpillars on them as I say I'm well pleased with the um, with the new ones for this year as I say they are absolutely beautiful well chuffed with them so once I spray them bottom ones I'll come back to them then I'll get started putting them ones up and so we'll have plenty of runners uh, for next year but for the time being we'll get myself way down the bottom and see if we can blast some of them bugs ok see you soon Right, okay then. So, here we are with all our second years potted up. 40 pots in all, which will go into this greenhouse here and the tunnel behind me. Um, we'll have two shelves, which will house 20 pots on each shelf. Uh, so that's quite ample for that one. Here's the big boys, these are now the three year old ones. And uh, these are the ones that need a little bit of work on, but uh, hopefully in the next couple of days we'll work our way through them. We'll get all these flowers up for a start. There is runners coming on, but we'll not use them. We've got enough runners from the first year plants, which are the nice strong ones. As I say, there's loads of runners coming through here. If you look after your plants, they'll never be short of the fresh cuttings for you to take. 
Uh, as I say, there's quite a few flowers coming on them, but no doubt we'll just work our way through these. Uh, two or three each day, pull all the flowers back, get them weeded out, and we'll give them a good spray with the rhubarb juice. And that, that'll hopefully fettle the, the bugs that's trying to get nestled in there now. Plenty of nice green foliage on the top there. Really fantastic looking, so yeah, well pleased with them. So hopefully next year we'll get a first class of crop of strawberries again. Right, so we're back into the lower tunnel again, and see the sweet corns are looking marvellous there. They've really taken off, and they're, they're actually pushing the top of the roof up now, the polythene, so that's a good 8 9 foot. Really growing strong. We've still got some strawberries in here um, with the runners on, so I'm going to have these shifted out tomorrow into the fresh air. Uh, they've done their business now, I'm well chuffed for them. I went to cabbage, they're well away. Get them outside soon, I think. Um, get them into the fresh air, and uh, they'll be ready for potting off, maybe it's in a week or two time. As I say, there's never any shortage of, uh, of runners. These were the last ones we took, and already I think they're rooted, so they, they'll come out tomorrow once we start getting all the other ones finished. Uh, but two French beans have been in just over a week, and absolutely amazing. They're doing really well. Well pleased with them. So come September, we'll get another crop out of them, and we'll get our baskets back. They're ready to start filling up. Uh, as I say, Roger's brought all my croissants in the day. They've all been cleaned down. All the bottom stripped off. There's a bit of leaf miner on them, uh, which of course is a little pest that gets into the leaves and burrows away. So that's the idea of my rhubarb spray for them. I'm going to fix them quite soon. They're doing well. I started this budding. Um, as I say in a tweet, I should have done it a little bit earlier because it's when you're at this budding and it's in its infant growth, it's really easy just to nip them off. Nice soft growth. You leave them on too long and they get a little bit twiggy. Uh, idea being that you've got your brake bud, and now that you get two or three good brake buds on each plant. Now, as I say, you don't have to take them off if you don't want to. You can leave them on and you make a nice spray out of each bunch. But like you just have one single bloom um, on each stem. As I say, just nip the side shoots out as they grow, and you should have a nice brake bud just in the top there. And we'll leave that. I don't like to take them out too early. I just like to work me up the sides, and then once I can see the brake bud, and these will be nipped out, no problem. So yeah, they're looking fine, they're, they're a little bit raggedy yesterday. Um, as I say, I've been taking some of the leaves off because leaf miner has been burrowing away and eating them away, so that's my next job, is to give them a damn good spraying, and that'll fettle them. I don't mind spraying the, um, the flowers because they're not going to eat these. And the strawberries, well, we can't give them the spray of rhubarb. It's not going to hurt them because it's, uh, we're not going to fruit from them this year. Um, so, if there is any pests that are a little bit hard to ship with the garlic, I'll certainly follow up later on with, the, um, with a good drink of um, rhubarb juice. As I say, the plants are looking healthy enough. We've got about eight varieties here. Some nice thin curves and reflexes, which I like to grow. Um, and the wife always likes a few nice blooms for the house. So yep, they're looking good. They're inside the lower tunnel now, so they've got plenty of protection. As I say, they're, they're looking a bit raggedy because they were battered by the winds there last night. Um, so I'm going to have to do quite a bit of work on these, get them tidied up, get them well sprayed. Um, what we did do on the buckets is we um, give them a good clean down, weed it out, and we top the buckets up with our own pot and compost again, bring it up just two inches below the surface. And they've just got a sprinkling of grow more, and that's all they'll need. We might give them a bit of um, nettle feed later on in the month, and then of course when the blooms start to, to bud up and start to flower, we'll be changing the uh, the feed to a high potash, which is where the uh, comfrey will come in handy. That's a good potash feed. As I say, there's still side shoots on these, but uh, near the top, and that's that's just a perfect example. That one there, it's very brittle, but I've managed to take it off. I don't like leaving them on too long. As you say, there's another one there. He can come off now. Um, just making sure that you don't destroy the brake bud, which is right there. Um, and they'll be fantastic. So I'm quite happy with them. I'm glad Roger's getting them all in. As I say, I've been quite busy today. Um, 
I'm up here tonight and I mean uh, make amends by catching up on some of the work. But uh, them dwarf French beans have absolutely romped away. They're looking really really good. Uh, I'll just keep my eye on them for black fly. Um as I say they could do the bit they call explain all. The inside conditions are a little bit more trickier for growing, uh, being undercover. A lot warmer. And so the pests build up a lot quicker, so you've just got to keep your eye on the ball um, and just make sure that they don't get, uh, don't get a hold. So what I'm going to do tonight, I'm going to bring the rhubarb spray up here and I'm going to give all these a good soaking before I go off tonight. And hopefully that'll, uh, that'll get rid of some of them bugs and make sure we've got a nice section of blooms for the wife uh, for the back end of the year. So I hope I've uh, answered a few of your questions. Uh, I know there's quite a few people wanting to know about the strawberries, so I've, uh, I've went right through that in detail, what we like to do, what we'll grow them in, and uh, the way we'll grow them. But I will be making an update each month as it goes on. As I say, we're in, uh, nearly the end of July now. August is uh, always a busy month now for us. Tomorrow I'm going to start up my own greenhouse at home. Uh, I've got all the winter bedding to start on, pansies. Uh, Bellis daisies and of course the old wallflowers. So I will be making another uh, video soon and of course I'll be starting off some garlic. The garlic bulbils. Um, I'll be cracking them open and uh, setting some of them away early. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, it's been nice having a walk around in this uh, evening sunshine You're up here in the northeast. So once again, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like, well, like we but we'd prefer if you would subscribe. Thanks again. We'll catch you soon. Bye for now.